Hey everybody, it's Daryl and Larkin down in the Fly Tires Den, and today we're tying up the Blowtorch Nymph. It is a Devin Olson pattern. It is available through Umpqua and a heck of a pattern. Now we can't explain what bug this looks like, but tag nymphs are pretty darn dominant in the comp series, and now they're making their way into everyone else's rig. So fill your box with some tag nymphs and start with this one, the Blowtorch. All right, in the vise, I've got an Umpqua X Series 400 barbless size 14 with a 3.5 mil copper bead. UTC 70 and Fireflow Orange, and one of the new Tiemco bobbins. Because it's that comfy and nice to, to spin. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do some, some jam wraps inside the bead, so my thread will be kind of pulled out on the outside, just to kind of get some wraps underneath to kind of keep it moving left or right on me. My goal is not to lock this down, I'll do that when I finish it. I'm going to basically tie in about 80% of that lockdown. If you find your thread building up out here, you're going too vertical. You want to make sure that you're really kind of pulling that inside that bead as best you can. And then you can always back off and make sure that you're, uh, you're happy with your taper coming out of that. So we're going to go ahead and do our thread wraps all the way back to the hook bend and tie a tail in. This is a tag nymph. Uh, the blowtorch uh, is a very unique pattern. All right. All right, we're going to tie in the tag section of this, this nymph, of this fly here, which is going to be some glow bright number five. And if you go over to Devin's website, Tactical Fly Fisher, he does have a blog entry on the blowtorch, and it's actually a really cool story. I recommend going to check it out. He kind of gives you some insight in how he came about it, how he found it. It was introduced to him and how he modified what he saw uh, to his liking. So we're going to go ahead and tie in four strands of the number five glow bright. This is not a long tail. It's a tag nymph. So we're going to go at probably that four to five mil zone. Uh, and anything longer will definitely be visually too long. You'll know. And now we're going to tie in a rib and a piece of flash. So the rib, and we're going to tie these in on opposing sides of the hook for a durability reason. And uh, when we go to wrap these forward, I will cover that durability uh, with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie our flash in on one side, uh, our rib in the other. We'll start with the rib. It will be on the opposite shank. So I'm just going to go ahead and capture, slide that right in behind the bead head, and then I'm going to go ahead and secure this to the hook shank on the other side. You'll notice I did a little angle up to accommodate for the, uh, the, the thread push going around my hook shank. I'm gonna wide spiral back up to minimize my thread wraps and minimize my silhouette. And I'm gonna tie in some micro flashaboo. Now you'll find micro flashaboo readily available at your local fly shop. Uh, not so readily available for most cats, depends on your, uh, your location, is Sulky. And Sulky is nothing more than a micro flashaboo product that's sold in fabric stores or sewing stores. And it is nothing more than a, a micro flashaboo that's got maybe a little more stretch to it, if, in my opinion, but that doesn't really matter. It's got a, a really wide spool. This is the silver metallic. It's literally sulky. Um, but really good paradigone bodies, really great ribs, you know, but for the most part, micro flashaboo will do the trick. Flash is flash is flash. Oh, I can't stress that enough. So now we've got our two Materials tied in opposite each other for durability purposes. And again, just, I promise I'm gonna follow up on that. We're gonna dub the body first. I'm gonna make you wait. In TV, they call that a tease. After the break, we're gonna dub the body and wrap forward. No, I'm kidding. We're just gonna dub the body and then we're gonna go over that, I promise. Uh, nothing's gonna change here from your typical dubbing body in a trout nymph. We're gonna keep it sparse. We're gonna control our taper. The sparser your dubbing noodle is, the more control you are in and building your taper. Um, I wanna see my thread through this so it's not too bulky. I can always add a little more and build back up. So there's my space here. I'm gonna go ahead and a little bit of undubbed thread allows me to, to, to wrap into where I wanna start. And then we're just gonna wrap forward. You can always tighten things up if things tend to wanna to get away from you and get wonky. And I'm gonna stop, well I don't know, a scissors width, one blade width, well, let's do that. Not a pencil's width, but one scissors blade's width, yeah. 
uh, for the back head. And that's basically so we just have room for our CDC feather and our hot spot. If we start doing everything up to that bead head and then we start finishing the fly, we're just not going to have room for it. All right, so now we have a, a rib and a flash tied in opposite sides, and there's a reason for that. Uh, we're going to want to tie our flash in counterclockwise. And when we look at the fly and tie it in counterclockwise, that will allow us to tie this in underneath the fly first. Uh, that, that, that over the top right there really exposes a vulnerable part of the rib, of a delicate rib at that. Uh, toothy critters, even brown trout, can nick this, uh, and then you've got a nick piece of flash that will eventually work itself out even though we're ribbing it. So that first wrap, rather than going over and exposing itself at a vulnerable point of the fly, Devin so astutely points out that 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 wrap underneath now really protects that vulnerable point of the flash. And then we can just come over and finish wrapping our, our rib up. And we're gonna get a good four wraps up and we're gonna secure this. And now we're gonna do the exact opposite where now the first wrap with our, with our rib on the opposite side goes under. And that under and opposite will now counter wrap and go clockwise. So not only is it going counter or opposite of our rib, but that first wrap is also capturing underneath. So now we have the rib and the protection of the rib underneath, out of uh, harm's way of the toothy critters. I will add a little bit of zappa gap to my thread here. I'm, gonna, I'm talking not even a, a quarter of an inch, maybe right here, just enough for, for three wraps. I'm just gonna let that sit. That way we've kind of like added a level of durability on the post end of tying everything in. Same thing, we're gonna go ahead and get this feather in, and anything that's too overdressed or too big, we can absolutely trim down uh, in a very natural way and get it back to where we want it and be in, uh, in control of how that's gonna look. Uh, I've done my standard cinch in the middle of that tag in the feather, and then get a wrap on the outside and then get a wrap on the back side of that feather, and that's gonna allow us to kind of get three grabbing points. And then inline cinch. I'm just going to bring these feathers back and wrap in a very meticulous forward motion and wrap up to that bead. I don't want to wrap my whole feather. That's going to get us into the overdressing section of the fly. So I've got a section on our wrap on the both sides of my feather. I'm going to now clip this off and I'm going to go ahead and preen things back and just give one or two securing wraps in an inline cinch versus a 90 cinch. And then we're gonna go ahead and whip finish in our hot spot, and then we'll deal with our CDC length. So you'll notice that we've got a nice amount of space here. We're not built up with our hot spot. There's no reason to kind of tie a hot spot and go to the whip finish. I prefer to kind of consolidate those and just whip finish your hot spot in. That way we kind of add a level of durability within our hot spot. If you wanted to add a little more durability, you could certainly do a little bit of zap on your thread in between those whip finishes. I'm gonna go, man, a little more. I want a little more of that hot spot. Trim that nice and close. And then when you look at your CDC feather, we're gonna wanna keep this no longer than the tail. And marabou or uh, CDC, those soft feathers, you can always pinch where you want them to be and then just take off the ends and you get a broken feather. And that broken feather really gives you a more natural taper on the end of that fly versus just cutting them. So you can kind of pinch and pull and break them off and kind of still have them look natural versus just cutting them right off. So the breaks kind of happen inconsistently, which gives it a more natural look. All right, well that right there is the Blowtorch Nymph. It is a Devin Olson pattern. It is available right here at the shop. You can tie them up or buy them up.